we've uh, been fortunate to once again be in Bill and Gloria's house. And I reiterate what I said before. If you haven't been out there for fellowship, you need to go. Spend some time. And look how the Lord will minister to you in their house. Our purpose in this life, I believe this is the reason why we're all here today, is we're in pursuit of something. And we're willing to do whatever it takes for us to maintain that pursuit, whatever it takes. Amen. Don't care what Amen. comes or goes. I don't care what the circumstances are. The world has nothing to do with my life with the Lord, no matter what goes on. God is still God, no matter what. You know, when I uh, we were on our way down to uh, Steve's celebration, and I told my wife, I said, did you see that big billboard? And she said, no, I didn't see it. And I said, uh, it said on there, the art of transformation, and they had all this kind of ethereal junk, and you know, glazed eyes, and all this stuff. And all. I said, all right, about that. I know about the art of uh, transformation. And uh, all of us are in transition. We made a decision to abandon the world and embrace the church. We made a decision to escape that death sentence that hung over us and choose the way of life. And that's why we come together because we need each other. Amen. We're in this together. Uh, somebody accused me recently of being bigoted and uh, prejudiced. And uh, they were Christian folks. And I said, I want to share with you that what I'm a product of. I said, a white man came to my house and shared accident and the uh, engine block came from a hoist over top of the head and struck me across the temple and the last moment of consciousness I was going over backwards over this post on the floor. And when I came to they were trying to hold me down and I couldn't use my arm to raise my arm up this high. And there was uh, an African American evangelist uh, female and go out low. And somebody said, Well, we need to go. And so we went to Royal Oak. And she preached her message, and at the end of the message, she said, There's a man here, and she almost described the shop accident. And she said, You are having difficulty uh, with your right side. And she said, If you'll come up here now, let me pray for you, the Lord. I didn't care who she was. I want to heal. And I think uh, we have to be that resonant. We have to be that malleable. Otherwise, we miss the Lord. The Lord moves in mysterious ways through mysterious circumstances at unusual times. We don't control that. All we do is we keep the door of access and possibility open. 
And those things that are impossible are possible with him. Amen. Amen. Possible with him. Amen. And so, I'm not looking for uh, life anywhere else but in the church. And we have uh, catchphrases that we use and they go over and over in my mind. I mean, whenever I think about scripture, save yourselves. Yourself. You. You save yourself. God's already done everything he's going to do. All of the possibility is there. All the opportunity is there. Everything that you need to become is available. All you have to do is access it. But when you decide to access it, you have to make a decision. I'm leaving the world. And I'm choosing this new life. That's not a matter of choice only. Because the scripture teaches us you must be born again. You must be born. Yeah. And God has an exact formula for that birth. I believe those people that say, I've accepted the Lord into my heart, and I'm saved. I believe that. I do. But that's, that's the beginning. There's a birthing process that needs to take place. There needs to be that reapplication of the breath of life. That comes through the baptism of the Holy Ghost and that old man needs to be buried. So we do that. Because we want to escape the world. Come into the church. We go to camp meetings. We expose ourselves to all kinds of conditions if we think the Lord is there. Because the basic thing is we need the Lord. I need the Lord. Catchphrases like in the world, but not of the world. Marvel, no. Don't. Don't be surprised. Don't think it's inaccessible or impossible. Of water and of the spirit. We know about those. We know that in this process of being born into this present world, we were born into bondage. Back to the matter. And we were born into bondage because a man made a decision in the beginning of history to abandon his relationship with the Lord and to nullify his agreement with the Lord and the conditions among humanity and in the world today is because they opened the door of access for the enemy. And the enemy has taken every advantage he can and he will. But the opportunity is available for us to be born in freedom. I'd like for you to turn with me to John the third chapter, beginning with the first verse. And I want to read this slowly because I would like for you to consider what's being said and maybe look it up when you get home again. I know I do when I hear things. I want to read those scriptures again. I heard uh, my nephew preach the opening message at Winter Fire and I called him and asked him, I said, send me your notes. He said, I'll do that. I said, you can ask my notes. Any of the notes that you want from me. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. That's a recognition. An identification. Hallelujah. 
something that we need to embrace. Uh, things that be not as though they were. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now you know why Jesus said that? Because Nicodemus needed that. That's why he had come. And Jesus, Jesus surmised that before he ever said anything. And so he had an answer right away. He has an answer for each of us. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, and, and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's, that's clear and concise. There, there shouldn't be any question about what the qualification is in order to enter the kingdom of God. There is no other way. So if we're saying we want to leave the world and, and, and be transformed, then we, we've got, this is what we have to do. We have to be born of water and of, the, and of the Spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And I've read this one time and I said, that which is born in the world is of the world. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And the reality is we're more spirit than we are flesh and blood. So if we're going to survive, what do we feed? The most. And that's why we need this today. That's why we need all of this. That's why when there's things that go on uh, among our families, we need each other. We need to run for the church. That's where the sanctuary is. We need to call. We need to phone. Because we need each other. Do not marvel, or don't be amazed, that I said to you, you must be born again. Now we know and the one thing that was confusing to Nicodemus was the fact that he had already been born of woman. He had a mother and father. But also being born realizing that there was another father present that had every intention to destroy him. The first chance he got in any way that he could to bring all of the influences in the world and all the pressures of the world against him that he couldn't destroy. And it is the intention of the enemy to destroy you if you're in the world. That's why we need the church. That's why we need to make this transition out of the world into the church. Church is not or walls or bricks and stones or pulpits or things like that. The church is a, a, a congregation of people who follow Jesus Christ and are committed to Him. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? See, he was still thinking from the Word. See, we, we were in the church. We know how it can be. We've seen it happen. I listened to the testimonies about the camp meeting. They saw it happen. They were there. Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel? Do not know these things. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify that we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. Now, I want you to know I got this about 4 a.m. this morning, a little after 4, when I finally got my notes done and I went back to sleep. So, this is not something that I pre planned with, because I didn't. And I believe this is specific for today. Here and now, now faith is and such things hope for the evidence of things not seen. 
Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. And I believe there are people here like that. They see impediments, and they see imperfection, and they may uh, imagine other things, but the reality of all of this is when you bring the church together, in that uh, congregation is perfection. It is all that we need for where we are at that moment. No one has ascended. He said, if, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven but he who came down from heaven, and that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. You know, I've watched, and I've been in a number of churches and a number of places, and I've seen people come and go. But one of the things that in analyzing it and saying, well, how can I help them? Not judge them, but help them. The one thing that I see is that they did not complete the birthing process. Either they were aborted by choice, not, not God's choice, but their choice, or uh, the seed was planted on shallow ground and nothing grew. Because I, I believe that what this word says, if we will commit ourselves to it, everything that it promises will happen. And we need it. I need it. I'm, I'm looking for that New Testament experience that began on the day of Pentecost. I'm looking for those things that happen suddenly miraculously and I've seen it I've seen miraculous healings people healed right in front of me uh, one woman with open sores and God healed those sores standing in front of us I saw it. I know what God and I want to share this God wants to do that but we have got to do something Amen. We have got to get out of the world and we have got to remain in the church. We have to eliminate the influence of the world around us. And sometimes we dwell on what's going on in the world. Amen. You know, we've got to realize the world's on its way to hell. Yes. And they're going as fast as they can go because they're listening to the wrong father. Jesus said, if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Amen. You will die. And we want to live. Yes. We want to have joy. We want to have peace. We want to have assurance. We want to know about that place that he's gone to prepare for us. So that we can be where he is. And you know what? what is, what's the scripture? I can't quote it exactly. But it says. Uh, the gist of it is. That the people in the world. Are looking for the sons of God. They're looking for people. That represent something greater. Than anything they know. And, and folks. You're it. They need you. I heard about, there were things I heard about Brother Steve I didn't know. I thought, that is powerful. Steve lived that. He lived it. He was committed to it. How we ought to be committed to it. I remember praying one time and I said, Lord, is this it? Is this all there is? Is there any glory in this? And God said, no. He said, but you need to change your thinking. 
And I said, you know what? You're right. You're right. I need to do that. Because I've allowed some influences come into my life. Do you remember that song in Sunday school? Be careful, little ears, what you hear, little eyes, what you see. That should be for us adults, too. There is no such thing as adult content that's not acceptable to the children. If it ain't acceptable to the children, I don't want to know it. I don't want to hear it. Because I want that transformation to take place in my life. I was seven years an alcoholic. Hiram Walker and Budweiser were my friends. I smoked two and a half to three packs of Winston cigarettes a day. I liked cigarettes. And the enemy liked the fact that I liked cigarettes. And I liked booze. But you know what? I wanted life. Yeah. I asked the Lord, I said, I want to know the truth the way that you meant it to be and not the way man would tell me. And I went into a church service in Auburn Hills, Michigan after being influenced by a couple that came to our house under threat, George and Karen White, <laughs> and broke down in that service and wept like a baby. And when I went up to the pastor, the pastor said, what can I do for you? And I said, I need to be baptized. I didn't know anything about baptism. Why that came out of my mouth, I don't know. Except God said, you prayed. You want to know the truth. You wanted to know the truth the way that it is, not the way man would tell you. Then this is the way. I'm going to tell you something. There are people that come up to this. God is saying, this is the way. And they turn around and walk away. And then they wonder why there's all kinds of problems in their life and there's all kinds of issues going on and they have no control over it and they feel like they're defeated and beat up and it's because you have turned around, turned back around and go back the other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When I came out of the baptismal, I was working in a Federal Army at Bowl. I went to work in a military uniform. I was full-time military. And a man walked up to me and he said, my friend, Tony Hush, and he says, I don't know what's the matter with you, but he said, you're not the same. And I stood there thinking, you weren't there yesterday. You don't know anything about what happened. So what's going on? I didn't see nothing. I mean, as far as Jane, I don't look any different physically on Monday than I did on Friday. But something happened in me, and there was this essence coming out of me that affected him. You know what? The power of God is in you. And you have something to give the world that they need to understand and feel. But for that to happen, you have got to embrace all that God wants you to be. God has given gifts. Each one of us has gifts. I heard Bill and Gloria, we were talking this morning. Bill said, well, I, I kind of thought about this. He said, there are really no churches in this area. You know what? I love to hear that because it says that I'm conscious of a condition that exists that shouldn't exist, and I want to do something about it. Yeah. 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 You've got neighbors living around you that are lost Amen. and they're struggling every day. S Scotty Manor works in some of the most uh, demonic situations. Suicide by cop. And they emotionally, these police officers have to deal with that. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what that is. You believe that they don't need the Lord? Oh my God, help us. Because there is psychological impact and demonic impact from those kinds of situations that are difficult to ex escape. You see the veterans that come back from Vietnam and Afghanistan and all those places and the emotional struggles that are going on and PTSD and all these other things and how they come back and they destroy their own lives 
and their marriages and their families, and sometimes they kill their wives. It's because they've reached a place where they have, it has been so destructive and delusional that they don't have anything else but to display this rage and contempt. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. We attend a little church up in Charlevoix, Michigan, and we we enjoy the fellowship. But I'll tell you what, I got intentions. I'm not there just because of the fellowship. I'm there because I know they need bourbon. It's one, to say, one thing to say I accept the Lord in my heart. It's another thing to enter into that birthing process. Because yes. that birthing has to take place. You must be born again. No option. No other alternative. If you are going to go that way, you must be born again. And the world needs to hear it. Because they're lost. Yeah. No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Spirit in me, I have access. And if he has all power in heaven and on earth, and he's in me. And he's the one who spoke the universe into existence. And he's in me. And who am I? What do I believe about the spirit that's in me? I realize it requires uh, a strong conscientiousness and humility. And it's not about self-promotion. It's about the Lord using us because it's His will that the world is saved. Yes. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life. What do you want? Eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have Everlasting life. Not some way where way out down the road, but today, right now, right here. This is the now God. Hallelujah. And we want to be the now generation, right? right. Now faith is. <clears throat> right now. Hallelujah. Suddenly, I believe in that. Hallelujah. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So what should our motives be? What's our motive? All I'm troubled by is you know, all the stuff in the world doing this. And I'm going to tell you something. I represent something better than that. Mm -hmm. I don't care what's going on in the world. Because I know the author and finish. I know the one who opens and no man can close, and he closes and no man can open. Hallelujah. 
He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Why? Because it's been in the world. And if you're in the world, you're under the law. And what does the law say? You're a sinner and you die. We've got a gallows waiting for you. We got chains for you, and we got a prison for you, and we're going to keep you right here. <clears throat> because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were and you know why they were evil is because they are living under the influence of the wrong father yes but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God the Father. I have some other scriptures here. Um, one comes to mind being transformed by the renewing of the mind of the church. Mm -hmm. So it's necessary. So that renewal has to go on. Uh, that's why we go to camp meetings. That's why we go to some preachers. That's why we worship. That's why we pray. That's why we're careful about what we listen to, what we watch. Mm -hmm. that, that television set's through full of all kinds of thoughts. Yes. Messages sent out. You know those advertisers understand? No matter how stupid the advertisement is, if they repeat it long enough, pretty soon people They know how repetition works. We haven't figured it out completely yet. One place we haven't figured it out yet, it says, forsake not the gathering of yourselves together. As a manner of some is. Why? Because this is critical to our life. Amen. No matter how tired we might be or what the weather's doing outside or how great the lake looks, we need this. We're skilled at feeding the flesh. We're, we're skilled at doing it. We know how to do that. What we have a difficult time doing is finding that food for the spirit. And the only way we can do that, God will place some in the church first of all pastors, preachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the same. Because God, God's desire is to bring you to perfection. And you know what? Way down deep, you know, last time I was here I spoke about DNA. Way down deep in us is that DNA and that distant memory of paradise. want to know, again, what that was like. And the only way it can happen is God got to breathe into us again the breath of life and restore us to our former estate where the enemy was not an influence. One of the things, I, I looked up the definition of transform makes a thorough or dramatic change in the form, appearance, or character. You can make a thorough change. You know, some of you, I knew you before you was in the church. You ain't like that anymore. And some of you know me before I was in the church. I met you, thank God. <coughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We ought to be standing up and shouting for what God's done in our life. Yeah. What happened to you in that camp meeting down there? Oh, Hallelujah that inspired you because you know there's something in us that hungers and thirsts after what God has for us. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because yes. we want to get to that place of transition. See, Steve went through it. He went through the transition. He's on the other side now. We're having a good time. Amen. But you know what it takes? And I'm shortening this up because we're running short here. Second Corinthians 8 and 8 through 12 says that we need to be of a willing mind. I remember a minister preaching a message. He said the battlefield of the soul is the mind. He said we win or lose between what goes on in this 12 inches. Right. How we think. Mm -hmm. The scripture says think on these things, the things that are good, virtuous, <laughs> good before. And really what he's saying, don't think on anything else. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. God's telling all of us, this is reasonable. I'm being reasonable with you. And do not be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Not only do you need it, but everybody around you need it. Nobody has a story like your story. I always marvel that when Paul stood before the king, and Paul was an eloquent orator, and Paul got up and said, I was on my way to Damascus. I saw him away the light greater than the noonday sun. I heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, black person to this thou man. He said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. He's telling this to finished, the king said, almost don't persuade us me. Well, I'm going to share something with you. There are people out there who will be persuaded. Amen. They will be persuaded. But they need to hear you. Now, you know, one of the things I, I always had a problem with, somebody said,